So Nevermore is a school for all types of outcasts with vampires, werewolves, and psychics and sirens. If you were to attend Nevermore, what kind of outcast would you be? I would be the outcast that don't have a face. I don't know what their superpowers, but guys. they're the greatest. I remember on set when, as soon as Tim saw them, because they were in hair and makeup for hours, he said, that guy, put him right here. And it was right in the back of a shot when we we're doing that yes, walk yes. at the top of the whatever. I would love to be one of those guys. What about you? What kind of outcast would you want to be? I kind of like being a werewolf, but for a change, I'd want to be a psychic. Kind of like um, Rowan's. Yeah. I like Rowan's telekinesis. Good. Yeah. So I feel like that would be really fun. I feel like Xavier and I have the same power, except he's just, just more talented because he has visions. He but and, <laughs> Yeah. And he <laughs> can draw and make them come to life. I feel like Wednesday kind of got the short stick or something. Yeah. Person. Yeah. What do you think about this world and, and this version of the Adams family is so different from previous iterations? Well, I think the first thing is that it's mostly centered around Wednesday because we've never really seen her as the lead character before. And it's following her and her journey through high school. And I also like that it's kind of integrating the Adams family into modern society. Like this is clearly the 21st century and it's funny to see them kind of interact with the modern world, if you would yeah. say. Um, but I, I also think that you are really passionate about this character and you spent so long figuring it out and you really put in the hard work and I think that's really gonna show. So I think people are gonna like this. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> Wednesday is such an iconic character, especially been done so many times in the past. Did you feel any like pressure going into this role? I felt immense pressure. I felt a lot of pressure to do it right because she's such a beloved character. I've never played someone who's been done before. So I think that that was a really interesting thing for me. And yeah, I mean, I have a lot of respect for the character and we've never spent this much time with Wednesday on camera before. I think there's gonna be some more depth or some more emotional range that we haven't really seen from her before. So I think trying to introduce that to the audience in a safe way, you know, pulling bits of nostalgia for them in terms of throwing back to previous iterations without knocking anyone off and still making it something new and fresh was a bit of a challenge, but it was interesting. Christina is a big part of our cast. Did you ever talk to her and did she give you any advice on Wednesday? No, I think when she was on set, neither one of us said Wednesday once to each other. I think because she knew not to say anything to me because what is she gonna say or do? And I don't think she wanted to get in the way of my performance to feel like she was overbearing. And then I felt like I didn't want to pull up something that she did 30 years ago. For one, the sake of my own benefit, but two, yeah, I didn't want to rip her off and I didn't want to be too much like her. And, and I think, I mean, the, our show has super powers and, you know, outcast and evil ghost pilgrims. So they're two very different people are Wednesdays, I think. Our characters in the show <laughs> are polar opposites. But, you know, they kind of have, Wednesday and Enid have a sweet little relationship. So I was wondering, how do you think that compares to our personal relationship? I think we also have a sweet little relationship. <laughs> in the show, they're both very different people and they both have different perspectives on life and different backgrounds. They complement each other very well and I think we complement each other very well in person. So I think that's something we both have in common, both our characters and yeah. ourselves. Wednesday requires you to kind of be monotone and really dark most of the time, but you also have a lot of funny moments. Were there any moments that you kind of broke character with? I think there's a few times and I don't think that they actually made it into the show. I know one of the times, for example, was that last day before Christmas break when we all were in the room doing the nightshades bit and I kept saying random lines and we kept ruining the takes because we were laughing about like- I'm so <laughs> envious I wasn't there. You weren't there? No, I'm not oh in, god, the night in the nightshades. Oh only my god. One. It was so- it was so bad. It was so not worth it. It was like not exciting at all. That actually wasn't a time that I felt that way. What about you? Can you think of any good, funny moments? There was definitely one in eight when I finally go to the Nightshades library. There was a time where they like, all the sirens rip off their necklaces to like, oh, we're gonna convince the school with our siren song. So they had to tape them to the back of their necks and rip them off because it couldn't work with the chain, but the tape wasn't strong enough. So halfway through the scene, they just kept falling <laughs> and, and everybody kept laughing and, we got like, <laughs> they were like, guys, come on. We have to get this scene done. So we were like, okay. And then it happened again and again and again. And I think it was just setting all of us off. Just the, it was really quiet and the clank you, on the floor. You know what was another good one too? That we had together? The Gates Mansion? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Tyler, Tyler is laying on the floor with like this huge scratch from the monster. He's just been attacked. We all run and we're looking and Percy comes up from around the corner. And he says, whoa, 
and he offers something and we ask him here's my scarf yeah he like gives a scarf out of nowhere he's way too ready but it, first he started laughing one take because he said we're all making the same face because we all were looking around like <laughs> it was so mysterious <laughs> and so corny at the same time I know that we all had to rap but none of us could keep it oh yeah we were like we had gone over time like we had to rap it was not funny at all but that's what made it worse it was so good it's only funny when you can't laugh. i know that's one of my favorite memories i think from the set <laughs> our show has a lot of unexpected moments but i think the biggest one would be the reveal of tyler and thornhill did you expect that or did that completely blindside you i expected it and i think you expected it too right i was interrogating you on it because i didn't have the last two scripts yeah. yet yeah i got you got sent them, them first yeah. sooner but i kind of knew from the beginning it's always the love interest so i wasn't really suspicious and the fact that she got along with thornhill the fact that they like went so out of their way to make it known that they were human and not a part of the world i don't know it just to me i i by episode two i thought oh, okay who was your first guess who did you think i think the xavier red herring kind of got me i really thought it was him but I was interrogating you on it because I I didn't have the rest of the scripts, but it genuinely did surprise me. Like I didn't yeah. see it coming. I thought I thought it was written very well. Yeah, the twist. To be fair, did not think Thornhill initially because no, 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 yeah, yeah. But, and also Percy looks kind of creepy sometimes, <laughs> so I think that that worked. So Enid is actually a critical piece in Wednesday surviving the eighth episode because she wolfs out for the first time, which is like a huge build up throughout the season. How did you feel about her? finally having that moment. I was very excited because I was scared that they weren't going to do it. Yeah. Because I didn't get the last episode script for a while. But once I found out that they were going to do it, I was so excited and they sent me to a werewolf like, boot camp. Oh, yeah. And then I never got to do any of it after I trained. For really? So, yeah. It was all the stunt They guys. didn't shoot. <gasps> I know they were originally supposed to have me do it, but it oh my god, they had so you crawling late. on the floor like they had an animal. Crawling on the floor like an animal, and I didn't get to do any of it. She it's was okay. good too. She was I good because I would go in for like fencing training or archery or whatever, and I would see that. I would see you like howling on the floor. She was doing backflips and everything, guys. She would be a good werewolf. She is a good werewolf. I know. I, I didn't know that they didn't let you do yeah, that. No, um, it's okay. But no, I was very very excited to finally have, you know, see her have her moment because she spends the whole season kind of brooding yeah. that she doesn't get to have her moment. And yeah. she has all this pressure from her mother and pressure from the rest of the werewolves at the school. So it's it's satisfying to be able to, yeah. to see that. So Wednesday was kind of involved in this love triangle with Xavier and Tyler, but she chose Tyler. But now that Tyler is off the table, is Xavier an option? I've always been against the love triangle idea. Now that Tyler's off the table, I feel like she's off of boys for a while. I feel like her and Xavier are just getting to a safe place. I think there's an opportunity there for a really sweet platonic relationship because I don't think it's shown often enough men and women having safe platonic relationships that don't become romantic and are just genuine, almost sibling-like mm -hmm. relationships. I think that that would be really wonderful to see between her and Xavier. So Emma, <laughs> would you like to see a little bit more Enid and Ajax in the next season? I would love to. I. Uh, I think it was you who told me that they're like this old couple that has stupid fights, but they never really break up and they stay together for a long time. I think their relationship is super hilarious and I would love to see more scenes with them together. They do make so much sense. They do. Yeah. That's hilarious it's hilarious because Enid's kind of the dominant one in their relationship. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. I love their dynamic. Yeah. Also, so unbelievably awkward and sweet. You, yeah, you guys are like a little sweet old couple who are super hesitant about things, or you could be super typical 80s comedy or like yeah. rom-com situation mm -hmm. where you guys are 13 and 14, but are so in love with each other. So the season obviously ends on a big cliffhanger where Wednesday gets her first ever stalker. Do you like that line? If there was a season two, where would you like to see your character go and what would you like to see in? I would like the show to be a little bit darker. I would like to be able to make a little bit more violent jokes or maybe for things to be a little a little bit more gory just because I think she would be into that. And then I think that plot wise, I don't know where they're going with the stalker. I've actually, I don't know who that stalker was. I always thought that it was Thornhill or Tyler, but maybe it's someone related to the Gates. I'm just curious. I'm curious to know if they follow that storyline, but I'm also interested in, yes, keeping those characters around, but also exploring something different. I feel like she might be obsessed with something and then throw it away because I kind of have a similar way of thinking. What about you? Where do you see the show going? I honestly always thought it would be fun if 
the show explored international outcasts and wow. how different countries kind of take care of their outcasts. I always thought that would be interesting. But for Enid, I would like her to be able to kind of learn how to control her werewolf abilities and use it, you know, because now she's finally got this big power and she doesn't know what to do with it. So I feel like that would be a good arc for her in uh, season two. I want there to be like a Swedish e uh, Enid a who Swedish comes Enid. in and has like higher fashion or yeah. better than or better. Just like a rivalry yeah. between. Oh my God, that would be incredible. I love that so much. That's where the show should go. Yeah. Swedish Enid versus. You got to get in the writer's Enid. room. <laughs>